Hello. <laughs> I've decided to start a series called How to Use Writing Devices, specifically in the fantasy setting. Basically what I want to achieve with this series is to explore all the different writing devices that are available to young authors or budding authors and to unpack how to do them well and how not to do them and how to do them fucking badly. It's all coming from a place of me learning along the way. So I'm not an expert, but these are the lessons that I'm gathering. I'm doing a lot of research and it's all coming together in my head and as I'm learning and as I'm growing and as I'm implementing my learnings, I hope to share them with you. So if there's anything that you disagree with or anything that you agree with or anything that you would like to add, please hit me up in the comments. In today's episode of how to use writing devices, we're going to be talking about one that really sets my tits on edge. <laughs> It's the long journey. The long journey. The long and fucking boring journey. Just stop. Anyway, today we're going to be unpacking what the long journey is, how to do it properly, and when to use it and when not to use it. The protagonist has to get somewhere. Him and his loyal band of followers are being chased. Q several near run-ins, horses that can run forever. Of course, there are some magical implementations along the way because he's our hero and his horse runs forever and he is going to be on a long journey to get somewhere really, 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 really important. <sighs> that was a yawn. This device is used by a lot of fantasy writers and it has been since Lord of the Rings, which is the first example that I'll give. Frodo embarks on a long journey with the Fellowship of the Ring and the, that particular journey lasts three very, very long books and it was done well. The next example that I'll talk about was The Dragon Bone Throne, again, a book that was formative of the fantasy genre. And this one, The Long Journey, was not done so well, my opinion, but it took too long, it was too slow, there was not enough pace. The third example of The Long Journey is The Wheel of Time, obviously in the eye of the needle, um, Brand and his band of loyal followers, along with the Aes Sedai and the Warder, go embark on a long journey that never seems to end. Ever. And of course, the long journey is used as a device by pretty much any epic fantasy from the 70s all the way up until today, in some way or another, whether it's done well or whether it's done badly. The thing about using the writing device that is the long journey is that it involves a lot of timing and a lot of pacing. And especially for authors that are more involved in world building, this can be rather difficult and tricky to get right. An example of an author that does get it right and who manages to maintain the pace and plot throughout the long journey is, of course, George R. R. Martin in his original book, Game of Thrones. So the Stark family embarks on a long journey all the way south to King's Landing, but they are not, the, the long journey isn't characterized by by long kind of overt explanations of their journey. It's characterized by arriving at certain places and then the drama happening on those places. In A Game of Thrones and in subsequent books afterwards, he used pit stops and destinations along the long journey. Instead of falling into the trap that the Eye of the Needle and the rest of the Wheel of Time did, in that their action happened while they were running. They were constantly running. They were always on the journey. And it gets exhausting. We get it. The long journey represents an opportunity to build character, to build conflict, and to build tension. But it's been done to death. It's literally one of the oldest writing fantasy devices. 
The Long Journey is a staple device in epic fantasy writing, but that doesn't mean that it needs to stay the way that Tolkien and Williams and Hobbes imagined it. It needs to evolve as a writing device, and the way you do that is by questioning whether you need to actually use it, and if you don't, then don't use it, or cut it down to a single chapter. There are so many ways that you can develop your character that don't involve them being on the road to a particular destination for hours on end. If you are using a long journey, and the chances are that if you're writing an epic fantasy, a long journey is going to come into play, let's talk about how we're going to make it original. I do make use of the long journey, but I try to subvert it from what it has typically been in older fantasy writing books. I try to make it more snappy, more destination focused, and less detail oriented. Because I think when it comes to the long journey, the detail orientation is what really bogs down your narrative and makes it move too slowly, and kills your pace and kills your timing. Here are my tips and tricks on how to implement the writing device that is the long journey properly. Number one, keep the fleeing scenes to a minimum. They've been done before. We don't need to see your character fleeing constantly from this danger or that danger. However, fleeing scenes do happen and if you must include them into your book, and most fantasy writers do need to include a fleeing scene into their book, keep it short, keep it to the point, and keep up the pace. Find some way to make it paceful, find some way to make it fast, exciting, and then end it. It doesn't need to last for longer than a few pages. If it does, and you're not completely focused on keeping up the pace, it can become tedious and it can kick your readers out of the immersive experience that you were trying to achieve with the flea scene. Number three of how to use this writing device properly, you don't need to describe every nook, cranny, twist and turn of your character's fucking journey. You don't need to do it. Cut to them. You're writing. You're the author. Use a cinematic technique called the cut to. Cut to them entering the inn. Cut to them approaching the gates. Cut to them settling in in their, in their rooms. This is something that I've actually had to learn quite strongly, is that the cut to is a perfectly fine technique to use, specifically within this writing device of the long journey. You can cut to whatever you want. It's quite easy as long as you set up the narrative properly. If you've embarked them on a journey and you've had one flea scene, you can then cut to them arriving at a safe place. You don't need to explain every single event or every single triviality or tedium that got them to arriving at that safe place. If your characters are traveling from point A to point B, get them there quickly. Cut to them getting to where they need to be. If it's not a part of the long journey, then don't make it a long journey. Traveling between point A and point B does not need to constitute three fucking chapters. Ah! Obviously, there are examples of getting from A to B it can be an opportune moment to world build or to use dialogue to develop your characters, but those are two very specific examples of when traveling from point A to point B should take longer. And yes, we also get it. Your characters need to get from point A to point B, but there is a difference between traveling your characters from different settings and a long journey. If you're just traveling your characters from one point to another, get to the point. Use one or two sentences like they were traveling, they arrived at the gates of, or they arrived at the inn of, or they set up camp. Use destinations and pit stops. I don't want to know every detail. It's something that I've had to learn to do myself. I don't mean to sound preachy, but 
it can really, really bog down your writing if you're going to take too long for them to get to somewhere. It kills your pace and it kills your timing. And lastly, number five. If there is a lot of travel in your narrative, and that's just the way it has to be because that's how you want to tell your story, then it might be an opportune moment to do some exposition. So uh, traveling, up, it's, it's like quite a monotonous way of writing. So uh, the way Brandon Sanderson does it when Shallon is, Shallon Devar is traveling, is that he uses it as an op opportunity to immerse his reader in world building as well when uh, like when we look at Tolkien using the long journey he uses a lot of dialogue to build character so if there is a lot of traveling and if your book is based around traveling then it's doesn't necessarily need to be a bog down if you do it correctly and if you use it for the right reasons you can build your world and build your characters in a very meaningful way whilst getting characters from point a to point b Thanks so much for watching this episode of how to use writing devices. This has been about the long journey and it constitutes the things that I've been learning through my readings, through my research and through my own writing. If you have any additions that you would like to make or if you'd like to disagree, then comment and hit subscribe, follow me on Instagram. I'm a new author and I would really appreciate your support.